Hey everybody. Hello. I know everybody except I don't know, haven't met you. What's your name? Steven. Steven. Nice to meet you, Steven. And brother, I don't know your name. Paul. Nice to see you guys. Yeah. Um, so brother Mike's not here today and we thought it was going to be Rick and then it's me. So yeah. And then more people are coming. So that's good. Um, let me just open in a little prayer. Okay. Um, Father God, thank you so much for bringing us all here together today. <clears throat> we came here to learn more, Lord, more about you, more about this process of deliverance, more about ministering to others. So, Father, I pray that you bless this gathering and um, help me communicate that which you've put before me to communicate. Lord, I thank you for every person here. And um, later when we pray, Lord, we have a high expectation of healing and deliverance. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so just for the YouTubers, my name is Julie Andrews. I'm one of the counselors here at the Arizona Deliverance Center, and this is ministry training Saturday morning. Um, so Brother Michael, he texts me yesterday, hey, could you cover me for ministry training? I'm like, uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, what do you want me to talk about? So... I don't know if anyone's ever called me this, but I'm kind of the miracle lady around here. <laughs> Since I've been doing classes on the miracle list and um, almost two years now, I've been, I, my first class was I think about a year and a half ago. I'm not really sure. Come on in, Michelle. Welcome. Welcome. Um, so it's been going really well. The miracle list, if you don't know what it is, it's a... It's, it's something that Mike put together after many years of counseling and he began to notice what are, what are common things people are struggling with. And he noticed the pattern and he said, wow, if I put these down in a list and people would cover these items, then their deliverance and their healing goes a lot faster. Mm -hmm. So when I think about the miracle list, I think about spring cleaning. Not for you guys, that might not mean anything. But for ladies, um, maybe your mom, okay? I don't know how many people spring clean today, but my mom certainly did. And so if you have no idea what I mean by spring cleaning, let me break it down for you. So spring cleaning takes several weekends. Typically, you don't do it during the week because you're working and you got the kids and you're doing stuff. But spring cleaning takes, you know, it could take a month or two because you are cleaning everything in the house from the windows to the walls, the baseboards, inside the cabinets, the refrigerator, the freezer. You're getting in there. Um, my mom would even come during the spring cleaning time, take my drawer, my dresser drawer, and dump it on my bed. Okay, now fold everything and put it back in the drawers. Um, you know, when, it first, when, she, when I first realized what we were doing every year, you know, the, when it first happened, I got a little mad. Like, oh my gosh, look how much work you just gave me. <laughs> um, but it was very effective, and every year she did this. She'd take the curtains down, wash them. She'd take the blinds down, put them in the, the, um, the bathtub, scrub them. I mean, everything got a good cleaning every year. Um... I wish I could say I was as good as my mom, <laughs> but she did teach me and I know how to do it. And so, um, so that's why I think, I think about the, the miracle list is like spring cleaning because we go throughout our Christian life and we go to church and we, we hear about things and we kind of do them, but then we just live our own lives. And so Mike constructed this list and said, okay, I want you to spring clean yourself essentially. I want you to look at all these different parts of you and um, get into alignment with God's Word. And what the Miraculous really does is it um, strips the devil or those spirits of their legal right to you. And so if you're still struggling in an area or you're still um, 
you know, you haven't realized, you know, you, you're still struggling with deliverance. You're, you're not really having the victory. There's probably something you missed on the miracle list. So, and it also starts your journey to breaking down those strongholds in your mind, those thought patterns, those lies that you've been believing that started when you were just a little, little guy or, or a young girl. You know, these lies that your parents probably began to teach you to try to protect you, but they were not in alignment with God's word. Therefore, it's not the truth. And so these lies that the enemy um, maybe used your parents to tell you or teachers or people in the neighborhood or just told you yourself, you thought it was your own thoughts, you constructed this stronghold in your mind. And that's what the enemy holds on to. It's like, it's like... Um, a handle or it's a house that they live in okay we try to look at the scriptures and say okay there's these strongholds what can we compare it to the lord showed me that it's it's like a house of cards and to the holy spirit it's a house of cards it's easy to knock down for us it's difficult because um these strongholds are a part of our personality a lot of times we've been relying on these lies really to protect ourselves anyway that's what the miracle list really does is it helps you spring clean inside cleansing your temple um, but guess what most people don't do it they don't do it so why why do you think people do not finish the miracle list why do you think yeah distractions and things come up okay good what else i think it's too hard the thing is too hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why else do people not finish the miracle list? Laziness. Laziness. Uh-huh. They don't think they need it. Pam? They get scared because they get attacked. Good. They get scared because they get attacked. Right. Uh, Mike said that a lot of times he'll get emails of people say, all hell has broken loose in my life when I started doing the miracle list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My life got more difficult. So what do they do? They quit. This is too hard. I'm not going to do it. Well, what happens is once you started doing the miracle list, when you started doing it correctly, you started now fighting the kingdom of darkness. And now it's fighting back. So um, I heard him say once that when he gets an email and someone says, yeah, all hell is broken loose in my life. When I started doing the miracle list, he's like, great, keep going. <laughs> M, <laughs> right? <laughs> you got those emails. <laughs> Great, keep going, <laughs> M for Mike. So, yeah, there's a lot of reasons. I've heard people, you know, they get the miracle list and, they're, and within a week they're like, I did it. I did the miracle list. I'm done. And then you find out they have awe towards somebody. They have negative feelings towards somebody after you get talking with them and you realize they didn't do it. They didn't do it. So, um... Any other thoughts about why people don't do the miracle list? Yeah. I think it, they don't realize that the warfare that comes behind it too, so it could be a lack of understanding and just seeing what really is at play, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Um, so the miracle list takes time, right? It takes time. But there are, um, most, there are some most important items, I would say. Um, one of the most important items on the miracle list is number one. And I have always referred to it as forgiveness, but really what it is is helping you realize the negative feelings you still have for people, which is called ought. Which is called ought. And when people, you know, hurt us in our lives, they hurt us significantly, a parent, a sibling, an uncle, a teacher, that, that, um, that really hurts deeply. And sometimes you don't even realize it's there because it was so long ago. So long ago. I worked with a young lady yesterday who, she began, she, she came in saying that she started the miracle list, but she quit. Okay. And she also told me that she didn't have memories of her childhood. All right. So as we got to talking a little bit more, a memory popped up and she realized, wow, when, my, when I was about seven or eight years old, my mom left me at my aunt's house 
and I was so scared I stayed up all night watching for her car to come back. Mm -hmm. And she didn't come back until the sun came up. And she felt terrified that her mom had abandoned her. She doesn't understand, she's a little girl. So I could see the pain still. I could see it on her face. She started to cry a little bit. She's like, wow. And then she realized I did the same thing to my son. But I left my son for seven days. Okay. And she began to cry and have some sorrow over that. So she realized that she still had ought towards her mom. Even though we have a great relationship now. I already forgave her. Everything's good. But that memory, the Lord brought it to her mind to show her, hey, it's not like you hate your mom, but you still have pain there. There's still some negative feelings. And so we got a chance to pray, and she got a chance to, to face that ne those negative feelings from that experience. And I believe God was able to heal her. Okay? Yeah. And so we may not realize that, you know, these people that are really important to us, ex-wives, ex-husbands, um, we trust them. We, we invest, you know, we, our lives are entangled with these people and they have the most, the greatest capacity to harm us very deeply. And uh, I'm, I'm more of an optimistic type of person. I like to see the glass half full. Um, I don't know. I think, I, I think both my parents are like that. They're, my dad was a pretty cheerful guy. He was an entrepreneur and he always saw, you know, the possibilities. And, but what it does is it can cloud your mind to think you already forgave the person because you want to. Yeah, no, I forgave them, you know. They're, it's okay. I don't, I don't have any negative feelings towards them. But when you slow yourself down and you begin to think about some of the details of the hurtful events, then you kind of check your emotions and see, is there anything still there? And so if I had to say, what's the number one most important item on the miracle list? It's number one. Mm -hmm. It's ought towards other people. It's that feeling, that uncomfortable feeling, that yucky feeling, that if they walk in the door, you're just like, oh. You know what I'm talking about, right? And it's not something you get over in a day. The pain, may, maybe it, you know, the revelation of an affair happened in a moment, but the pain, you know, is deep. And so it can take some time. And so what does number one say on the miracle list? It says we need to pray for the people that have hurt us, right? Um, Matthew 5.44 talks about, uh, you know, loving uh, our enemies. Uh, you got your phone. Why don't you bring it up for me? I, I don't have it right here. Uh, this was a quick preparation. Matthew 5.44. Um, it's actually that scripture is a couple different places in the Bible. But it essentially is four things that it's asking us to do. And so when Mike says on the miracle list that you're, you're going to pray this, the scripture exactly the way it is written. Some people get hung up on that. Like what does that mean exactly? How do I do that? Do I just read the scripture? Like, do I think of the person? Hey, there's their picture. I'm reading the scripture over you. <laughs> right? How many of you have been kind of stuck on that a little bit? Like, what, what does that mean exactly? You got it? Yeah, sir. Okay, go ahead and read it. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. Keep going. No, that's good. So, no, it doesn't, it doesn't tell us exactly what to pray, but it tells us to pray, right? And so you're going to love your enemies. And there are some people in your life you would definitely say is an enemy, maybe a person who um, attacked you or an uncle that molested you or something to that. They're definitely... An enemy, a pedophile is an enemy, right? Even if they are a family member. And so you have to you have to say, okay, Lord, how do I pray for this person? I need to pray for them, I need to care about them. 
as a human being, as a as a someone that God has created, and and actually mean my prayers to, for that person. Um, I've told the story before. Um, I I don't know. I guess I didn't really know about the miraculous, but I knew about Matthew five forty four, and I had a rift with my sister in law, and I, we didn't talk for about four years. I didn't see my nieces and nephews. And I could remember like making dinner and a conversation in my mind would spring up that I wanted to tell her this and I wanted to tell her that and I could feel all the negative emotions and it wasn't right what she did and 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 then I caught myself and I'm like wait a second <laughs> uh, stop the conversation Lord I bless her I'm blessing her I'm um, Lord bless her bless her motherhood Bless her marriage, God. I pray, and I just over time I began to become an intercessor for her. That is love, right? So in the beginning, my my prayer for her was a little robotic, because I was mad, and I believed I was right and she was wrong. But um, through the separation, it broke my heart. And I'm like, okay, Lord, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Bless those who've hurt me, who've persecuted me, right? Do good to them. Praying for someone is doing good to them, right? Absolutely. Um, and so this went on for quite a while that the conversation would be going on in my mind. That I'd be like, no, stop it. <laughs> and it, I would use it as an alert to say, now it's time to pray for her. Okay, Lord, whatever, wherever she is right now, I pray that you bless her steps. And that you, you know, answer her prayers. And I don't know, I would come up with all kinds of things. Some people are better at it than I am. But I began really praying for her. And then one day, out of the blue, after four years, she sent me an email inviting me to my niece's birthday. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And the relationship's been restored ever since then. Praise the Lord. Yeah, really praise the Lord. It was out of the blue. But I was doing my part, right? Praying for her. Getting rid of the yuck in my soul, like telling myself, hey, I think it was wrong what she did, and this hurt this other person, and my mom was involved, and there was all this stuff, but I was like, no, I'm going to stop the conversation in my mind, I'm going to stop looking to the past, and I'm going to just do what that scripture tells me to do. Mm -hmm. And a miracle, God worked it out. And, you know, I never had to, um, I don't even know what I would have said to her even, because there was so much over the years. Um, but some people, you need to make a phone call. Mm -hmm. Some people, you need to make a phone call and just say, you know what? I said some things I shouldn't have said. I got, a little, I got, I got out of hand at that birthday party, and I made, a, you know, I made kind of a fool of myself. I'm really sorry about that. I know that hurt you. That's a, a way I know in um, some circles we say it's making amends, right? And that is re very powerful. I have an ex-husband and I did this. I called him because um, I knew, I, I knew, we know these principles. We've heard them before. If you read your Bible, you've read about it. Where you go to your brother, if you, if you have, if you want to give a, a gift at the altar and you know somebody, it, you're at odds with somebody. Don't give your gift. Go and make it right and then come back and give your gift. I knew that scripture. So after some time, I did. I called him and it was really hard. And I wasn't looking for an apology from him and he didn't give me any. But that's not why I called. I called to say, you know what? I was wrong and I'm sorry. And I said some things. I didn't like confess all my, my sins that he didn't know. That's not what you should do. Just... You're just saying, hey, you know what? I was wrong, and I really want to apologize, and I, and I ask for your forgiveness. I, I can remember to this day where I was driving on the freeway when I made that call. It's, it's etched in my mind because something changed in the spirit world. Something changes when you come into alignment with God's Word, when you become obedient. The spirits take notice, and the Lord takes notice. There's something going on there, um, you know, and it was done. 
and it was done. Now, have I looked back, you know, since then? Yeah, a few times. It doesn't torment me though. It's part of my life. It's part of the mistakes I've made. And so, so that brings me to the, ne the second most important point on the miracle list is number two, ought towards yourself. And so I've heard Mike talk about it this way. Um, you know, you might have ought towards yourself about how you look or about your size or, you know, those types of things. But a lot of the ought stems from regrets, mm -hmm. mistakes you've made. Mm -hmm. Oh, why didn't I, why did I marry that person? Why didn't I finish, you know, that project that I started? Oh, why did I take that job? Right? And... Uh, these regrets is what he says and, and these both of these number one and number two he says make a literal list right if you've gotten the miracle list you've read it make a literal list of the people that have hurt you significantly and then begin to pray for them until all the negative feelings are gone you're dealing with the ought and so number two is dealing with the ought towards yourself and so you make a list of all those regrets why did I marry this person well, I never had children. I regret it. I, I didn't take that job opportunity when it was offered to me. Darn. I didn't try harder at that relationship. Whatever it is. Okay? And you make a list of these regrets that you still hold on to. And that's what you have to deal with in number two. The negative thoughts you have towards yourself. Man, why did I? Why did I sell that house before the market skyrocketed? <laughs> <laughs> um, dang, now I'm stuck in a little apartment. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, you know, these are, these are things. And who wants you to look backwards? The enemy. the enemy, right? He wants you focused on the past. And the Lord wants you focused on the future, right? And so if the enemy can keep you looking behind... And having ought towards yourself because of the stupid mistakes you made in the past, which everyone has made, and he's got you. He's, it's like he, there's a handle in your soul he's hanging on to. And it doesn't matter how much deliverance you do. If you have that self-ought, those demons won't come out. You have to deal with it. You have to forgive yourself and you go over that list and you repent for each one of them and you let God heal your heart and then you let it go and then you look towards the future and say, okay, Lord, I don't know how you're going to fix, but you're a fixer. You're a redeemer. That's what he does. He redeems it. Um, I prayed for someone last night and... I was talking to them about there's things in you you don't even know exist, but God is calling them forth. You don't know it. You Stop looking behind you because it's not there. The thing that God's bringing you towards, you haven't even thought about it yet. But He's drawing it out of you. He's doing it. But if you keep looking behind, you'll never notice it when he tries to bring you in that direction. Um, so I do women's ministry here, which is um, interesting. And I've said it before, and some of the ladies are here today, today that are in the class on Tuesday nights, but um, never one time did I ever think I would be in women's ministry. Never once. It was never a thought in my mind that I would be uh, holding a class, especially not holding a Zoom for women. Um, Never did I ever one time have a desire, I'm going to be a women's minister. I didn't know that's what God had for me in my future. And um, seems to be going pretty good because people still show up. <laughs> it's, I don't get any hate mail, which is great. Um, so my, my point is this miracle list is really important because... It's going to help you identify those things that the spirits are still hanging on to in there. You can come up to the altar for deliverance all you want, but if you don't deal with that stuff, it won't matter. And you'll get deliverance, but guess what? Those spirits will just come right back in the back door because you got this ought towards yourself, ought towards others. 
We have to let let those people go. Um, and so, you know, why why are these why are those the most important? I think I answered it right. That's the the spirits are hanging on to it. If you don't, it's part of renewing your mind, dealing with these regrets, dealing with the past hurts, these people that have hurt you. Um, it'll hinder your deliverance. It'll block it. It'll block your healing. It could be the very thing blocking your healing right now. And um, you have to deal. You have to deal with it. And if you don't, um, you know, it's just gonna. It'll snowball because people keep hurting us. And so I go back to what's the miracle list, okay? And do you ever finish the miracle list? Yeah, there is a point where the spring cleaning is done. But guess what? Things get dirty again. But you don't have to go through and do a deep cleaning because you just did it. Um, I refer to that as doing, a, there's a dumpster deliverance where when you first start, you get a whole bunch out. And it may take a year. It may take a little longer, um, but then there's a point where you move from this, a lot of stuff you're dealing with to what I call feather dusting, where now you're just going back and you're maintaining. Okay, um, man, when was the last time somebody hurt you? <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> okay, and so you have to deal with that. I mean, I, I, and, and usually it's someone hurt me a couple of years ago, and then they hurt me again. And then they hurt me again. And then somebody brings up their name, and I'm like, oh, I still got that ugh, inside here. And if that person walked in right now, I don't think I would feel so good. I'm still working on it. I'm still praying for that person. I'm, I recognize I still have a little yucky yuck inside. I don't beat myself up for it. I just, I know it's there. And I just keep, I keep, I keep praying. I keep showing love towards that person. I keep thinking positive thoughts towards, you know, I keep saying, God, you're going to bless them. And I want nothing for the, but the best for that person. And, um, you know, that is showing love. That is, you know, and, and, yeah, there's persecution. The people who persecute us are usually people in the church, people in our own homes. They're not like way far out there. And so, um, yeah, so um, I, well, I'll pause for a second. Does anybody have any questions? And those are just the two points on the miracle list. The miracle list is long. Anybody have any questions about it? Yeah, Joe. Um, I hope this isn't a question to justify my art, but I'm honest. <laughs> we'll judge you for it. No. <laughs> I'm honest. Maybe it is. Um, you know, I think of the scripture when Jesus told Peter, uh, get behind me, Satan. Okay. Because uh, he sort of had his own. And just like you just said, it's the Christian, a couple of Christian men in my life that use scripture to kind of justify their behavior. Their sin. Their sin. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it bugs me. And I've, I've, I've tried to help these guys lovingly, mm -hmm. and I have prayed for them, but it always seems to come full circle, and, and they sort of reject me and tell me to kind of, I'm handling it the way I handle it, and you handle your Christianity the way you handle it. And, um, and it's like if I avoid them, is that odd? You know, uh, because um, I want to pray for them, I want to love them, but it seems like I have one friend, he deals with a lot of legalism and religion, and I, could, I, I really could discern that that's what's happening with him, but he still kind of shoves what he thinks down my throat, and every time we talk, it kind of goes full circle where we're, and, um, and, um, I just kind of make, sometimes I block them, sometimes I'm like, okay, you know, uh, this seems to be reoccurring, it goes full circle mm -hmm. every time, and what should I do, you know, because uh, I even asked the gentleman if I could mentor him at one point, he said yes, but uh, I don't think he meant yes, <laughs> you know, and you know, I mm -hmm. made mistakes too in that process, sure. uh, but um, I just don't want to have odd against them, and I'm not sure if I do or not. 
So staying away from someone because they're in sin is not necessarily ought, but is biblical. Right. So I don't know the scripture, but some something like if you're, you know, if someone is a brother and they are in sin and they refuse to repent, don't even bring them into your house. Don't even dine with them. Right. Um, there's another sc scripture that talks about, you know, staying away from a scoffer. Don't try to correct a scoffer or you'll get burnt. Um, right. Don't throw your pearls to swine. Too. So, so um, there are certain people we just know, all right, I can't have that conversation with that person. Right. Because if you keep trying to throw your pearls, or you keep trying to correct the scoffer, or you keep hanging out with a guy with a bunch of anger, it's going to come back on you. It's going to go bad. Right. And so the scriptures give us... Um, I wish I had them right here. Um, they gives us some guidance on how to deal with these difficult people. Right. I, uh, I, I got some counseling after my wife passed away, and one of the things the counselor mentioned to me was, don't advise anybody and don't correct anybody. Um, you know, especially if they're not open to it. Right. And, and you know, we have to be wise. I know there. I know when I come here on Tuesday nights, and I have to remind myself of this. On Tuesday nights, when I come, and and the ladies come, and we sit down and we talk and we have conversation, which I love, and they're asking questions, and they're and and some people are asking me like, "What do I do?" This is this is they came here to get. They think I have some wisdom to to offer them, and so I. I have permission to speak into their lives, sure. right? And they're asking for it. But there's other people in my life, not that, it's a, not that it's bad, but they have not opened up the door for me to speak into their lives. So all I can do is pray and trust the Lord, right? right. And say, okay, okay, Father, I'm going to let you handle it. You're way better at it than I am anyway. But I know, I know for a fact on Tuesday nights when people come and do they always follow? No, they don't. I got one gal, she's not even started the miracle list. She's been coming for like over a year and she wants to argue about it all the time. Uh, yeah, I'm still going to love her. I'm still going to hover, hug her, but I don't want to engage in conversation with her because I know where it's going to go. Um, try to, but so she's a little resistant to wise counsel. She's resistant to it. I know it. So I try not to give her too much. Just pray for her. You understand perfectly. <laughs> so that was a good question. Yeah. So you're free to, you know, and, and then also um, there are certain people you can only have a certain level of friendship with. Um, I break this all the time with my mom. Uh, I don't, know. I don't know how else to share experiences except my own screw-ups. So here I go. So I love my mom dearly, and she professes to know Christ. And at one point in her life, she's going to church, reading her Bible. She did. She made a lot of good changes. I, I think she got born again. But she's in a bad spot now emotionally. And so now I'm all into deliverance, and I'm trying to tell her, you got to catch the negative thoughts, you know. I mean, I'm all about it. And she doesn't want to hear it. She changes the subject on me and I want to, well, mom, you know, you got to, you got to slow down and catch, you know, I, I don't have permission to speak into her life. And so I got to remind myself, okay, keep it on the surface. She wants to talk about Judge Judy. We'll just talk about Judge Judy. That's okay. She wants to talk about, you know, what she bought at Walmart. Just keep it right there. This, I got to train myself, right? To say, don't, I don't have, there's no open door there for me to speak what I'm learning into her life. I need to meet her where she's at. Yeah. So that's what I've learned. Anybody else on that? Yeah, Jen. My parents, my whole family. <laughs> I tried for years, like the first five years I was saved. Yeah. You know, and it just went bad. Pearls before swimming, you can't. Right. There's no open door there. For and they refused it anyway, so I backed off and. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, were what, they were what anyways? 
they refused it. They oh, don't. Oh, they told geez. me to cut the Jesus stuff. So right. anything that you know. No, I didn't. What's the point? Gotcha. <laughs> they Wait. just go walls go up. You see them. So yeah. you know, there's none of that conversation. It's Walmart or <laughs> right. Just Walmart. keep the gym, whatever. They don't even know what I do here. You know, they don't. Perfect. <laughs> so, yep. Wow. You know That's, the boundaries. Does that hurt you that they, they don't know? Or, or, it hurts or, me that they're not saved. Does, does it hurt, hurt me they don't listen nor, to me? No. Not more interested in that the fact you're trying to help people? Um, no, not really. Uh -oh. I got over that a long time ago. Gotcha. We're on two different planets, so I understand I would, that. I'm the youngest of five, and I would like my siblings to come down here and check it out, and they... One did, and then he said he'll never come back, and everyone's nuts down here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, if I told my dad I was a deliverance minister, he'd probably try to commit me. Like, really. Yeah. Because I've tried to tell him before, you know, like mental illness and spiritual things like that, and he got really upset. I said to my older brother, I said, would you like to see um, what I'm interested in? Because they're really trying to help people down here. Yeah. They really have moves of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah, I'll come. Then they don't. Okay, so we got to recognize, you know, there's a rejection that maybe a lot of us still carry, and we want those people that are very important to us to approve and right. f place value upon what we're doing. My mom still says, do you ever help anybody? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, mom, maybe, a couple, yeah. <laughs> so I have a question about the tension between, between authenticity and replacing... Uh, all things by by the thinking of God, by fruits of the Spirit and things like that. So I think for me it's a good thing to be honest, to be authentical, so not to deny what's happening inside here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we learned a lot of things now, these weeks especially, and before too, right. uh, to have a new mindset, to replace all things, all old things, mm -hmm. Um, with godly thoughts, godly mindset, and this is good too, it's scriptural, I know. And, but there's a tension between, if, for instance, me and my wife, how should we react? Sometimes I met some person, I, I thought I don't met this person, but I met only scriptures, uh, because I feel there is something, but they will not be honest. They say, yes, I'm good, I'm in the Lord, Everything is okay in the Lord. I'm more than an overcomer. Uh, right, right, you right. Know what I mean. Have you something to say? So I think I, I think I understand what you're saying. Um, so when in America there's something called a Word of Faith movement, where you just repeat these scriptures and somehow they'll manifest in your life. If I say them enough times, if I say them loud enough, if I say to my bank account. Be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> I'm looking at my bank statement. Be fruitful and multiply. I'm more than an overcomer. Why isn't my balance changing? That's not how it works. That's not how it works, right? So um, it's good to, the scriptures are awesome. It's truth, right? Um, and someone can say, I'm more than an overcomer. But are you changing how you think? Okay, so last night, I'll, I'll say this. I left here, and my throat was kind of bothering me. Well, I was up most of the night with a really bad sore throat. And um, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to speak. And uh, I called out for some prayer. And <clears throat> I kept believing, Lord, you're going to help me. I didn't say, I'm an overcomer. No, I said, Lord, you're going to make me be an overcomer. <laughs> you're, I'm going to go in faith. Really, I didn't talk all morning until I got here. And, and I'm like, I, I, I'm just going by faith that you're going you're gonna to provide. And thank God my throat's not even hurting. Nice. It's been in pain, you know, since last night. And I'm like, okay, how's this going to work? Um, but I, I made, I don't know if I'm, I'm, Addressing what you're saying, uh, it's a process. It is definitely a process to, to believe the Word and act it out in your life and, and see it come to fruition, definitely. 
I don't know if that, that's helpful to you. Sometimes I have to uh, be aware of my feelings and sometimes I have to act against my feelings. Uh, that, amen, brother. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Women, did you hear it? Yeah. <laughs> So this is a woman problem, big time. It's a man problem too, but I'm a woman, so I can speak to that. I, when I realized that my feelings weren't always telling me the truth, it was like a huge revelation. And I started to speak back to my feelings. No, I don't have to cry. No, I don't have to be overwhelmed. No, I don't have to experience this chaos within myself. Stop right now in Jesus' name. And when I started speaking like that, and, and it happened during a time where in the world or naturally it would make sense that I would be very upset, but I could tell because I was mourning over someone who died, but I could tell this extra, this extra emotion that was coming up that I didn't have control over. And I started to speak back to it and I calmed down. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Um, especially coming from someone who um, I pretty much lived out of my emotions my whole life. And so, uh, do I always get it right 100% of the time? No, but I I'm working. I and now I know that I can speak back to my emotions and say, no, I am not going to feel anxious. You shut up. <laughs> Calm down. Leave. I don't care if you're in me, outside of me, talking to me. Just get away, get out. That's what I always say. I, I mean, I'm not big on, well, is it inside of me? Is it on the outside of me? Is it witchcraft? I don't care. You're causing me to feel anxious. And right before I came here, I was starting to feel my throat was really hurting. I was feeling anxious. And I was like, no, devil. I'm like, I'm not putting up with that. I don't know how it's going to work out, but right now you're not, stop, just stop. I'll put my hand wherever I feel the discomfort and say, you stop right now. Leave. Just go in Jesus' name. And so far it's working. It's working pretty good. So maybe that'll help you. Maybe that helps you. Okay, praise God. Did you want to say something, Jess? Well, I'm just thinking about odd feelings. Yeah. Both in regards to past mistakes and, you know, being self-conscious about your looks or whatever. Yeah. So those odd feelings, like, it's one thing to, to just pray against it and like, bless this person or God, you know, I know I made this big mistake. Please, you know, please forgive me. I acknowledge it. But then when you're faced with the consequences of those mm. things, it happens to come up. So for example, for me, you know, not getting a place when I had an opportunity, I, I, rep, I notice it when I'm sleeping on somebody's couch. I'm yeah, you did. Hand. You were faced I'm with it. In the back of my truck. Mm. Or I'm at someone's place and I can tell they don't want me there. Right. It makes me feel, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. those things come up and it's a reminder. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you, Screwed you, up. You know where you'd be right now if you would have your own place. Right. So I understand that I have to fight those things and you know, pray against that and just be like, yeah, I'm grateful. You know, I could be gone. I could be dead the way I live my life. Here I am. So I understand, and I'm just wondering, is that just the process? You just, every time those feelings and thoughts come up, you just pray against it, you acknowledge God, and then just at some point they lift off, sort of like, um, one time I had really bad sinuses for like two years, and I'd just be like, every time I'd feel it, I'd be like, now nah, God's going to heal it. And then one day I just was like, wow, I haven't had that in a long time. Mm. It's gone. Mm -hmm. God healed it. Is it sort of similar with the odd that you just at some point it just goes? There's a scripture that says um, that the writer said, I looked for it and it was no longer there. I wish I knew where that was. Um, I, I looked I looked, and, it, and, the, and the problem was no longer there. Um, so, so it's kind of resonating with what you're saying is, um, yeah, I think when we come, when we walk in obedience to the Lord, He um, deals with our enemies. Mm -hmm. we, we walk in obedience, and then He begins to change things. I, I say, give God elbow room in your life. Give Him a chance to work. Well, I got saved, and I got deliverance, and I, and I, I, I did the miracle list, and it's been, it's been three months already. Why isn't my life different? Slow down. Calm down. 
it didn't take overnight to get into this problem. It's going to take some time to get out of the problem. But God is working. God is working. Amen. Yeah, brother? I forgive my wife. Mm -hmm. I them, but I forgive what, what she had done. And I was talking to my daughter about you know, opening up to her. You know, what, what, what I let go of And I don't thank God that when I had this, this hurt of me, I turned spread to God. And he healed me through the process, everything I was going through. And, he, and I, that loneliness was the Lord. He took that loneliness back. Not that she was gone. Mm. And, and he, oh, that, that my heart was, was, was I, I just felt his presence so wonderful. At him. But when I was speaking something, I felt, I meant something that she had done. I got a little emotion. So I, I thought, I thought I, I'd give him all my heart. So what I had done, I, I done it today, and I, I felt she left. Before I came here, I, I looked to God, and I was thinking what she had said, and I was going through it. Mm. And I told, I told her, you know, you have to forgive me. I look at the person who I was, and what you brought him out of. I'm not that person anymore. Mm -hmm. You love me when I, when I, didn't, I didn't even love you. I didn't, I didn't mm. even acknowledge you. You know, all the things that hurt you, I hurt you by the way my actions, how my actions, everything that held inside you, that, that hurt. When you, when you hold that hurt inside, the whole inside, you respond to your heart, because your heart, you respond to others that way. Right. I, I was hurting people that way. Mm -hmm. Despite all I have done against you, you love me. She said, you look where you brought me in and now. I'm, you know, I'm still working, I still have place to go. But look where I'm at. That allowed me to come and look at her and forgive her. And I felt something. Look, God, God revealed to you. Yeah, amen. God revealed to you something beautiful. And it shifted the, the pain to a rejoicing. You changed your perspective, and God helped you do it by giving you that revelation. That's awesome. Yeah, it's good. I, I love when we get to have conversation because ho I've heard it before. People say, you know what? That's what I'm going through. Oh, I didn't know that's how it worked. Oh, I'm not the only one. You know, because a lot of times I meet people, they get stuck here, and they don't communicate with other people or... Maybe they, don't, they haven't gotten to the point where they have more friends in their lives to bounce things off of. And so you just get stuck right here and you think, oh, I'm the only one. Everybody else is doing great and I'm lagging behind. But no, we're, we're all fighting. We're all fighting. I can't tell you how many times I was like, okay, Lord, so if my, my voice isn't going to work, maybe, maybe Joe could step up and I'll do the camera. <laughs> that's what I kept thinking. I'm like, okay, that's my backup. I didn't tell him because I know I freak him out. God told you? Yeah. So that's good. He goes before me. Um, you know, it, it's the walk of faith is um, unsettling, to say the least. The walk of faith is um, you don't get to plan your next five years. Mm -mm. What are you doing? If someone asked me that because my birthday just passed and they're like, you know, what's your, what's your plan for the next five years? Follow Jesus. <laughs> That's all I got. One day at a time, Lord, don't let me stray again. Yeah. How many of you are saying that, right? God, just keep me on this path. If I got to forgive somebody, Lord, bring it to mind. If I got some awe against myself, and, it, and every once in a while I'm reminded, you know, circumstances, I'm like, Dang, I know I, I wouldn't be reaping this consequence. And then like brother said here, the Lord will help and remind me, look at all the good that's happening. And if we gave him our lives, and I, now I just say, okay, it's your life, Lord. It's your money. It's your life. It's, it's your health. It's, it's you. I'm just following you. And so I'm, I'm using that to say, shut up, devil. I'm not listening to you. This is God's, I'm God's project. I'm his responsibility. And if things aren't going the way I want them to, well, Lord, that's your life. So I'm going to just tell myself to. It's much simpler. Yeah, that's the simple, that's the simplicity of Christ, right? right? Michelle. I have noticed lately, I have moved in with my sister. She's a very most difficult person in my life. <laughs> But I have noticed that even uh, though I live with her, when I wasn't with her, 
I wasn't able to really understand a lot of the dynamics between us. And I didn't, and since I've been living with my sister, God's been showing a lot to me about the things that I have to overcome when I'm around her. And at first I thought, this is not cool. And then I thought, wait a minute, it's an actual blessing that I'm around her and up to know that God's being able to reveal things to me that I need to work on mm -hmm. in order to go farther into my, my healing. And I thank God that I'm able to recognize what things are going on and being able to uh, work through my triggers and mm -hmm. understand that it's not my sister that's doing it. Right. You know, it's not her. It's it's the enemy that's playing through her. And mm -hmm. I'm able to distinguish that better now than I did in the past. Mm -hmm. And I feel better knowing that I'm able to overcome more, even though I'm around her. Amen. No, that's good. I'm glad you brought that up because um, two things that I want to say, share about having ought towards others. Brother, uh, there was a person I was struggling with early on when I started the, when I started being involved here at the ministry, and he said, um, "Now I want you to think." He goes, "Think about all those sins you committed against the Lord." He's like, "The list goes out the door," and I imagined, you know, this long, like Santa's list of things rolling out the door, right? <laughs> pretty long. I don't know about you. Maybe you're not. You weren't as, as good of a sinner as I was. But um, <clears throat> And then he said, okay, and then how long is the list that the sins that she committed against you? And he's like, he kept going, long list, short list. I was like, okay. God forgave you of the Santa list. You can forgive her of the short list. I was like, you're right. <laughs> it's nothing compared to what I've been forgiven of. So that helped me like, take a step to really let go of those things, those offenses, right? And then the other one is realizing like my mom, my beautiful mother. It's not even her talking. Right. It's not even her talking. It is big. When you can realize it wasn't that, it wasn't the, the molester, it wasn't your uncle that did it. You know how many criminals? They, I, I know this guy. He, uh, he committed a crime. And he said, I had no, I don't, I can't confess to committing this crime because I have zero memory of it. Yeah, dude, because it wasn't you doing it. You were taken over by a spirit of murder that took over your faculties and you were past, you were knocked out. And of course, when you came back, you're like, what? I used to work with students a lot. Um, this one guy who tell me, he's like, miss, I don't know what's going on. I would get super angry. Next thing I know, I wake up on top of the guy pulverizing his face. He goes, I don't even know how I got there. This is ninth graders. Rage took over. And so those are like two very clear examples of it's not them doing it. And so this guy who, you know, he's got all this religious blah, blah, blah. He's offended by you or he wants to teach you something. It's probably not even him speaking. Now, I mean, we have to take some responsibility. We, we cooperate with these things. I'm not saying, you know, we're off the hook completely, but it maybe can help to understand he's being driven by a spirit to say these things, to be combative, to debate, to strive, to argue. Well, I, I realize it's not him, but I so... Because I love him, I so badly want him to realize it's not him. Well, prayer is going to be your best, yeah. your most effective weapon. Because talking, you tried already. Right. Didn't work. <laughs> it's right. So stop doing that. Right. Doesn't work. 
right? Insanity, you keep doing the same thing, expecting something different, sure. come on. Sure. So I've seen a lot of, a lot of miracles through prayer and, and give God room. Like I say, give him some room to move. And so, you know, just talk to the guy about baseball or whatever, keep it light. Don't get into the religious stuff. And that's hard because you're like, oh, I'm going to fall for it. But it's the demon setting you up. Right? right? And then afterwards, you're beating yourself up. Right. I know you are. <laughs> and the demon's like, yes, we won. We got him. Condemnation, shame, guilt. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so that's um, that. And so um, I'll say this. The miracle list is very important. If you, um, let's say you dabbled in witchcraft. Uh, so there's two types of witchcraft. There's a witchcraft of the flesh talks about in Galatians, a work of the flesh. Your, um, you know, mothers are amazing at this. They're, they'll say things and I gave birth to you to try to get you to change or to do this or do that. You know, who do you think you are? I'm your mother. <laughs> Don't say that to your kids. Um, but it's an attempt to manipulate or control, right? That's a work of the flesh. It's their own flesh talking. And then there's a work of witchcraft that there's more like witches and warlocks, sorcery, okay, actual, um, and, and word curses. They're very powerful. And you have a person of spiritual power and they start speaking against you in, in the privacy of their home, you know, activates demons. Anyway, what I want to say about that, if you were involved in witchcraft at any point in your life, um, the two parts on the miracle list after number one and number two that are going to be very, very, very important for you is godly sorrow and the gift of hate for demons. You can't be passive. You can't be passive. You have to really get before the Lord. And, um, and yeah, you got to remember, you know, may, oh, that's in the past, you know, but you're still having trouble. I, I got an email today from somebody who had some weird stuff happening last night. She's like, I don't know how this showed up in my, my, my home. I'm like, kind of sounds like some witchcraft right there is happening. Like, that's a strange thing. Yeah. So you're, you're talking about even anything occult? Oh, uh, yeah. So very good. Occult, new age, witchcraft, any, anything that you are trying to manipulate using, you know, a uh, law of attraction or crystals or, um, you know, uh, invoking some type of spirit, even trying to invoke the Holy Spirit. You know, that's really witchcraft. You're trying to control the Holy Spirit. I'm going to sing these songs so passionately so that I can feel the Holy Spirit. Don't do that. The Holy Spirit does what He wants to do, when He do wants to do it, and how He wants to do it. I have really come to understand that we cannot control the Holy Spirit, and when you try to do it, that is witchcraft. Yeah. You mentioned praying fervently or, or trying to draw in that feeling. You think that draws in familiar spirits? You know, it could if you're if you're um, non. So be 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 sure. I know what Joe's saying. It's you know I've prayed and prayed very passionately, and then I feel something, and I'm like, whoa, that's powerful, you know. And and that's rare. That's a rare thing. Um, but if you're like, I'm gonna get down on my knees to feel something. I used to worship the Lord every night, and I would feel something like euphoric. Every single night, pins and needles, heat, cold. I'd have all these body sensations, and I thought it was the Holy Spirit. And so I was doing it so I could feel the Holy Spirit. I'm going to do this, Lord, so you can do this for me. I want to feel the presence of God. Let me tell you, if you come with a pure heart to the Lord... I remember my early days, I was listening to this guy called Keith Green. I didn't know any Bible stories. I didn't grow up in church, and I'd sing his songs, and I was learning. I, I didn't know the prodigal son story until I was 21 years old, and I listened to it in a song. 
And when I heard the part where the father got up and ran to the son, I just started bawling my eyes out because I was like, oh my gosh, that's so amazing. <laughs> um, I, I did have a Holy Spirit moment because I was like, I was holding on to that song because it gave this long interlude between the, the son saying, I'm going to go back. I'm going to be a servant. I'm going back and then it gives this long musical interlude and I was like, I'm waiting, I have class right now. You know, I gotta hear the rest of the song, what happens? <laughs> Cause I never read it before. And then, <laughs> um, when the father gets up and runs to the son, I just lost it. Praise God. I wasn't conjuring up anything. God revealed to me his character Amen. in that moment. I'll never, I remember I was in Pompano Beach, Florida. I was going to Broward County Community College. I remember the street I was on and I was bawling my face off because I was like, oh my gosh, this is God? This is how awesome of a father he is? And I just was like, wow. In that moment, the Holy Spirit revealed to me the love of the Father. And, um, you know, when, when you have those experiences, you want more of them. Sure. And so then you go into these places like some churches, you know, mega churches. They got the smoke machines and the lights and the music is vibrating your, your, your blood vessels. <laughs> <laughs> And you're like, I remember when I would go to Ozzy Osbourne concerts, and this is great, <laughs> you know, and, and everybody's got their hands lifted like they're worshiping the person singing. You know what I'm talking about, right? And it's very emotional. Um, I think that's the danger of some of these, um, you know, and it's manipulating. Mm -hmm. That's witchcraft. And so I had to do a lot of repenting. Because I, I was doing it to get from God instead of doing it because I love the Lord. I come here because I'm serving an audience of one. My first year of serving here sucked. <laughs> it was awful. I like got so many very, very sick people. I got people that were suicidal. This was their last hope and they got me. Oh, great. <laughs> Poor thing. One lady, she wasn't even saved, and she ran out and ended up in the psych hospital. I was like, oh, Lord, I screwed up. But once I got the understanding and, and the comparison, it just happens with ministers. Like, oh, well, that deliverance happening a little loud right there. Wow, that's going really great. And mine's like quiet. Oh, my gosh. You know, oh, I must not be that good of a minister. That person got three appointments. I only got one. There's all this comparison that goes on. And a friend helped me out. He's like, look, one plants, one waters, but the Lord brings an increase. And as a steward, your only job is to be faithful. And it's for the Lord. And so I show up today. If I can't talk, I'm still being faithful. Right. So guess what? I get an A. Even if it bombs. <laughs> Literally, I have one page of things Mike said, yeah, cover these. And I'm like, all right, Lord, I don't know what else, but usually I can come up with something. <laughs> um, the miracle list takes time and don't get stuck. I think people get stuck on, um, let's say, negative thoughts. Well, I'm still having negative thoughts. I can't move on to number five. Okay. <laughs> Negative thoughts are going to pound you your entire life. So write down your top 10 negative thoughts and deal with those, okay, and work on it for a little while and then move on to the next one. And guess what? You're still going to be working on the negative thoughts. And when your boss yells at you at work, you're going to have to go back to number one. <laughs> and when you screw up, you're going to have to go back to number two, right? It's, it's, it's our Christian life. So don't get stuck on you know, and beating yourself up. Well, I'm still having negative thoughts. Okay, yeah, well, keep working on those, but write them down and see them because a lot of times after you write down the negative thoughts, it's going to show you how ridiculous they are. We just did an activity last Saturday, uh, Thursday, Tuesday. Um, we wrote down negative thoughts on little sticky notes, 
and we were comparing. And so there were these themes. Four or five different people had the same negative thoughts. How is that possible? That's the same demon mm -hmm. running around telling you the same lies. Right? And so when you begin to write down these negative thoughts and you realize how ridiculous they are, it, it's helpful. Yeah. And then you can really repent. Lord, I'm so sorry for, believe, you know, for even spending time worrying about that. I'm sorry, Lord. Your word says this. You're my provider. You're my shepherd. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to let that hold me. I always say this about... And the negative thoughts that get yourself five or six handy scriptures and keep recycling them. Praise God. Yep. Just keep recycling. I mean, when I first started, and it was way before I met Mike Smith, but I would have the negative thoughts, right? And I could only remember, and I would cry a lot. And I just would remember, Jesus even wept. That was my weapon of warfare. Jesus wept. So I must be okay. I'm crying. Jesus cried. I'm all right. <laughs> you got to start somewhere, right? So, um, yeah, the videos are good. I know they're super long, but they're good. That's information. And so the, the miracle list is broken up into stuff you got to do and then stuff you got to learn and, um, and stuff you got to keep doing. <laughs> And so gain, you're going to gain knowledge also. So um, I'm sure there's some of you that you started the list. You started it. And you've had it for a little while, but you lost it or got too hard or you got attacked or life got too busy. And, you know, you might want to repent of that today and get back on it. So, let me pray for us. If there's any, are there any questions before? Yeah, Xavier. I just wanted to share a scripture with you now. Yeah. Okay. That it takes time. It's in Mark 4, verse 26. And he said, this is the reign of God. As if a man may cast the seed on the earth and may sleep and may raise, rise in night and day, and the seed springs up and grow, and he had not known how. For itself doeth the earth bear fruit, first is the blade, afterwards the deer, afterwards full corn is in the ear. Can you read that one more time, but slower? <laughs> and he said, This is the reign of God, as if a man may cast the seed on the earth, and may sleep, and may rise, night and day. Slower. Slower. <laughs> Keep going. And he said, This is the reign of God, as if a man may cast the seed on the earth, and may sleep, and may raise, night and day, and the seed sprang up and grow. He had not known how. For itself doeth the earth bear fruit, first is a blade, afterwards an ear, and afterwards full corn in the ear. And whenever that fruit may yield itself, immediately he doeth send forth the sicker, because the harvest has come. Amen. Amen. You know, Jesus was a great teacher, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. And his disciples were still a wreck after three, four years. <laughs> after having the best teacher. Right. Takes time. Yeah. Takes time. Because we may not see it, but it's definitely growing and working. God is working, even right now. Yeah, Joe. Um, I'd just like to make a, a, a comment about my own walk, uh, a realization that I came to. Um, when I'm really getting hammered by the enemy, tempted, uh, or negative thoughts, whatever <laughs> it may be, I, uh, I pat myself on the back and, and say it's somewhat of a backwards compliment because I really must be getting to him because he's, he's coming hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, I go, let me keep doing what I'm doing. Let me, let me fight the good fight of faith. Because mm -hmm. um, uh, if I wasn't getting to him, he wouldn't be hammering me like this. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. praise God that I'm bloody in his lip. Amen. That's right. As the devil reminds you about your past, you get to remind him about his future. Right. <laughs> yeah, Michael. Yes, um, uh, mostly we talk today about situ situations where people we had odd on them, uh, they, we do not live daily together with them. But I know many situations, uh, couples, parents and children and other situations, you can't 
draw back. And so you stick daily to each other. Mm -hmm. And daily, the same things that hurt. hurt the same. Mm -hmm. but, and surely, I think you surely you have some experience with this, and my beloved W. Smith too. And um, what, what do you experience? What helped them? For you, the one side, yes. But it comes again. You every time, perhaps you see them. What do, and uh, what were the counsel about this? So, when someone is coming against you, let's call them fiery darts. Right. Okay. And what does the Bible say for us to do? To lift our shield of faith. Okay. How do we build up ourselves? Faith-wise. The Word. The Word. And Jude it says, pray in the Holy Spirit. Yep. Building yourself up mm -hmm. in the Holy Spirit by praying. Right? If you're in a battle like that, I would be praying in tongues more than you're speaking in English. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. My dear brother... Um, he probably won't watch us. So uh, he, I've been talking to him about deliverance for the last three years, and he has seen a big change in my life. So he believes, um, but it's only been recently that he said, Lord, bring revival to my home. Okay, well, that was like a huge light going up into the sky and, and then alerting everybody <laughs> up watching that God was going to do a great move in his home. Well, all hell has broken loose. And um, he was getting a lot of attacks. And then he told me recently, he's like, I'm praying in tongues more than I'm speaking in English. And he's like, I don't even feel it anymore. He's, I, I just imagine when we speak in tongues a lot and we build our spirit, man, is strong. We can hold up that shield of faith that's going to extinguish the fiery darts of the enemy. And it won't, it won't penetrate. It won't hit us like it hit us before. I mean, some might get through still, which is normal. But the more you align yourself with the Lord, your, your, you, your, your spirit, who you really are is your spirit, man. That's, who you, that's your real person. What you see right now is not who I am. You only get to see little glimpses of my spirit, man. That's who I really am. Right. And that really helps when I look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, right? What you see in the reflection is not who you are. Not really. It's just our shell. But when you build up that spirit, man, and, I, and I've been through different seasons in my life where I pray in tongues a lot, and, man, nothing bothers me. Praise God. I, I'm, I mean... The mirror doesn't bother me. The person not returning my text message doesn't bother me. You know, the person cutting me off in traffic doesn't bother me. The sarcastic comment at work doesn't bother me. Like, nothing bothers me. I'm like, Psh. I just, I'm like, you know, I don't care. Right? Yeah. And so, that's what I would say. And that's on the miracle list too. Start praying in tongues as much as you can. I'm telling you, um, from a counselor standpoint, so, and I was a counselor for 11 years, um, a secular counselor, I think the miracle is brilliant. Mm -hmm. It's really brilliant. And so that's why I keep promoting it. And I'll say this, probably should have said it in the beginning, but I'm going to do another class um, starting in May for the ladies. Sorry, guys. Um, and I want to do more open conversation so we can hear what everybody's going through. And we did some activities last time. I want to do that. I'm not going to record it. I, you know how I, ladies, you know how I feel about that. I just get to be more myself when I'm not being recorded. And there's enough recordings. There's, a t there's enough. There's like three rounds on YouTube of Miracle List, you know, going over it. I guess they're all a little different. But, um, yeah, I mean, pray, pray that the Lord will open a door for a guys group to start. Because I think um, guys would like it. An opportunity to share. And how do you deal with that? And how do you work through that? And maybe. So, yeah. Um, 
Mike said something about a month and a half ago, a month and a half ago that uh, I've been implementing this strategy and it's helped me tremendously. He said the demons are freeloaders. They're, they're trespassers. Totally. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to pay for anything. Mm -hmm. And he said if you get tempted or a bad thought comes into your mind, a negative thought comes into your mind, he goes head over to your Bible and start reading it out loud. Mm -hmm. Nice and loud. Amen. And I, I, I've been uh, doing that, and boy, is it a good strategy. It, it's really, um, it's because my my mentality is make them pay for that thought that Jay just put in my head. Amen. You know, just because they're attacking you doesn't mean you did something wrong. wrong. I hear people's, did I open a door? Did I sin? What happened? The curse landed. What did I do? No, it's probably because you're doing something right. They're attacking you. They're a thief. So... They'll come in even if your door's closed, even if the door's locked. They'll take a crowbar to try to get in. Right? right? It doesn't mean you didn't close all your doors. It just means they are who they are, and that's what they do. They want to get in and kill, steal, and destroy. So we have to be vigilant. Huh? It's not always your fault. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Not always your fault. I think once you get through the miracle list and you take care of those things and you're living an upright life, most of the time it's not your fault. Mm. What, what curse is from the past? You know, g let God reveal it to you. He will. He will totally. Okay, last, last comment. My sister made a comment to me a couple of weeks ago. And uh, she says, you know, the devil owes, the devil owes you. I said, why do you say that? She goes, because she's been living in your head, rent free, all this stuff. <laughs> you need to make them pay. Amen. So let's do it right now. <clears throat> let's do it right now. We'll make the devil pay. Because he's uh, been trespassing. Well, Father God, you did it again. You came through for us. Yes, Lord. Lord, thank you. You're, um, you're faithful, Lord. You're faithful to your word. You're faithful when we even put forth a little bit of effort to come near to you. When we put forth a tiny bit of effort to draw near to you, God, you draw near to us. Yes, we may have stepped a hundred steps away from you, but we're only one step back to you. So, Lord, there's some people in here, they have not done the miracle list, and they have their reasons. But there might be somebody in here that wants to repent of it. I want to repent of not following through. I want to repent for quitting. I want to repent for being prideful and thinking, I don't need to do it. Or, I already did all that. This is dumb. I want to repent for that. There are some people in here that are battling and um, they feel like you're not helping them, Lord. But you are helping them. And so we just want to repent of that, Lord. We say the name of Jesus, but it doesn't seem to be working. Well, Lord, we know that's not the only strategy we can use against the devil. Sometimes we need to praise you. Sometimes we need to give you thanks. Yes, Lord. Even in the midst of a very difficult, scary, life-threatening situation. So I guess we have a little ministry team here today. I guess you come up and if you like some prayer... Um, come on up here. We'll pray for you. Oh, we guess it's very dark. <laughs> hey, Joe, you want to turn on just one of those lights back there so I can see? Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> so maybe you didn't finish the miracle list. You want to repent of it. Just come up here and do that. Or something else. Or there's something else you need to confess. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'll pray with you, Joe.
What yeah, I just um, I just really want to be a soldier. I just really want the ministry to go to another level, and uh, I I, I want to. It's not that I don't want to struggle. I know that's part of the process, but I I just want I just want to go to another level, and really help uh, uh, other people and love and serve uh, more effectively. Can you wait for his time? Absolutely, and 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 um. I always have been a patient person, but when okay. it comes to that, patience has been a little bit of an issue. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so, what's why? What's the why? Impatient about that? What's uh, the thought in there? I guess I, I I think it should have happened by now. It's like, for instance, I want to be on the ministry team, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. for some reason, that's uh, you know, there was a gentleman in the back here six months ago, and he handed. He handed me a note and said, there's something inside. He said, um, please help. And I prayed for him. And uh, I actually saw an embolism going up and down his leg. Mm. It was spooky. Mm. And um, and I think I picked up a couple of transfers because I kind of took a step backwards in things that I was dealing with in the past, like lust and stuff, and uh, voyeurism. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's still an issue. And... Uh, uh, I just want to be used of God, and uh, and um, you know, pe people told me, you know, wait till you're officially on the team, and they also told me don't uh, don't touch any ladies. Right. Uh, and that perturbed me because I wasn't touching them in a perverted or sexual way, but I was told not to, regardless. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyways, that's, that's, I guess that's just a big picture. Um, so you got a little offended. A little bit. And, uh, but I just... Did you deal with it? I did. And, um, and here's the good news. Um, you know, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Uh, I just turned 63, and uh, I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing in my life. Because um, I'm learning so much. Amen. And it's been about two and a half years now since Sherry passed away. And... Uh, Wow. It's, it, it, um, it's been challenging, but I see so much favor and provision, and uh, and I'm, I'm, um, I'm good with Philippians 8, focus on what's lovely, what's pure, which is righteous, which is noteworthy, which is admirable. I'm, I'm good at that, because uh, I try to look at all the things that are so wonderful about my life. I have a wonderful family. Uh, okay, if you want to go to the next level with God, you're going to have to die to yourself. Right. That's that's what I'm getting right now. Right. So the parts of you that you want to still hold on to. Yes. Okay. And at, when I have done really well in the past, mm -hmm. I, I've gotten a little puffed up, for sure. Okay. So you have to crucify your flesh. You have to surrender your life to God and let Him do it the way He wants to do it. Yes, Lord. He might keep you in a holding pattern for a while. you yes. got to be all right with that. Yes, Lord. I repent of not doing that, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry, Lord. For trying to lead it. For trying to lead it, the, the process and not letting you lead the process. Trying to be the shepherd, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm so You're sorry. my shepherd, God. Yes, you are, Lord. Thank you so much. There you go. Thank you Keep so going. much. Praise Keep going. Keep going. Yes, Lord. I'm so sorry that I that um, I let ego and pride into the picture, Lord. I'm so sorry, Lord. Keep praying. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mary Ann, she's here, Lord. She's surrendering it all, Lord. She's surrendering it all. All to you, Lord. She's surrendering it all. There you go. Come out of there, self. Come out right now. Worship of self. Come out of there. Come out right now. Come out right now. Go to Cindy. What is it? What is it in there? What is it in there? What is it in there, Marianne? Come out of there. Let loosen her right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Looser right now. Goma Sandateke La Rakato Sandateke. She wants to serve you, Lord. Yes, Lord. She's got a, a testimony. Yes, Lord. The devil told her she was no good. She couldn't help anybody. Her life was a mess. But Lord, that's not what you say about her. You've set her feet on solid ground. You've given her a community to encourage her. There you go, just repent. Just repent of it. You just tell him, just repent of it. Sorry for the doubt, Lord. I'm sorry for the doubt. Sorry for the doubt, Lord. Believing these lies, Lord, I'm so sorry, God. Allowing myself to feel so overwhelmed. Get out of there, anxiety. Come out of there. Come out right now, anxiety. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Go. Anxiety and depression, you come out right now. Come out right now. Go. Go right now. Get out of her chest. Anger. Come out of there. Anger, come out right now. Come out right now. Anger, come out of there. Anger towards husband. Anger towards us where she is in life. Come out right now. All that awe towards her husband. You come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Come out right now. The negative feelings. Come out. Husband, come out of there. What's his name? Uh, Robert. Robert. I command the spirits from Robert to come out of her right now. That rejection. Come out right now. Come out right now, Robert. Go. Go all those years together down the drain. Come out of there right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of there, Robert. Just let him go. Nice deep breaths. My um, my ex, my um, kid's father. Two of my kid's fathers. Um, he did this out today. He did mm. 17 years. Oh. And some anxiety was trying to come in. Mm -hmm. What's uh, his name? His name's Alfred. Alfred. Yeah. So all my kids are scared, and just they don't know what he's gonna do. What are you worried about? Um, my children being I nervous. Know, yeah. Um, I I know he ain't gonna do anything to me. I mm -hmm. felt that peace that God is in control. Like, you know, the Lord is our my protector. I know mm -hmm. he's going to protect my family. Um, it's just my kids were coming at me yesterday and I'm like, oh, they were all like scared, you know. Mm -hmm. I started praying to my kids. Um, I, and I wanted to come to that. I want my tongues to be more fluent. Okay. And I'm like, sometimes I doubt myself, like, are my tongues, are they okay? And I know it's the enemy lying to me. Mm -hmm. you know, so. Definitely. Definitely. And I want to sing in tongues. I want to just, you know, I love to sing. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, that should be easy then. Yes. So go ahead and try try to pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Yeah, right now. A little louder. A little louder. Oh, good. Just a little hum to it. Perfect. Keep going. Feel it. They're beautiful. Keep going. Keep going. Think about your daughter as you're doing it. And just release her. Keep praying in tongues and keep thinking about your daughter and release her to God. Yes. 
Go ahead. Keep praying in tongues. You're thinking about daughter. You see the worry on her face. Keep praying in tongues. And just breathe in and breathe out and releasing her in your mind as you're praying in tongues. I let her go, Lord. I let my daughter go. In your mind, just say that. Keep praying in tongues, though. I let go of my son. An overwhelming feeling. How am I going to protect them? What's going to happen today? Are they safe? I release them to you, Lord. I'm releasing them to you right now, Lord, my children. I'm releasing Alfred. I'm releasing him right now. I'm trusting you, Lord. Come out of there right now. All that fear that drummed up yesterday. Fear from her children. Come out right now. Come out of there. All that worry. All that stress. All the talking. All the what ifs. Come out right now. Alfred, come out of there. Come out right now. There he goes. Alfred, come out of there in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out right now. She's releasing you. Out. The spirits from Alfred. Come out right now. There you go. Come out in Jesus' name. Alfred, come out right now. Come out right now. Violence and drugs. Come out of there. Verbal abuse. Come out right now. Come out of there. Come out right now, all the threats from the past. Come out right now. Come up, Alfred, come out. Alfred, come up and out right now. All those spirits from Alfred, come out in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Alfred, come out right now. The unknown, come out of there. Out in Jesus' name. Go right now. All that control. All the drugs, come out right now. All the lust, come out of there. Come out right now. Temptation, get out of there. Come out right now. Go in Jesus' name. Loose him. Loose her. Loose her. Alfred, up and out. She releases you. She releases all those negative feelings from back then. From her children's father. Come out right now. Come out right now. The threats, the worry, the unknown. Come out of there. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Loose right now. Loose right now. Loose right now. Up and out, Alfred. Go. In the mighty name of Jesus, get out of there. You drug spirits, I want you out right now. All the violence. Come out. Come out, Alfred. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out of there. What is, what's he going to say to my kids? Come out right now. All that anxiety about him getting out of jail. You come out right now. Come out right now. Go in Jesus' name. Loose. Loose her. Loose her in Jesus' name. Loose her in Jesus' name. Come out, devil. Come out, devil. Causing anxiety. Causing worry. Causing stress in her children. Come out of there. Alfred, come out. I let him go, Lord. I let my children go. Come out right now. Feeling out of control. Come out of there. Feeling like I have to control, that I have to protect everybody. Lord, I'm sorry. I release them, Lord. Criticizing myself about my tongues. I'm so sorry, God. All those spirits that came in when she was married from Alfred, I want you to come out right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, all you devils, come out of there. Abuse, come out right now. Verbal abuse. Drug and alcohol abuse. Come out right now. Come out right now. Lying, adultery, fornication. Come out, come out in Jesus' name. Loose her now. Loose her right now. Go. Go in Jesus' name. Get out all you devils that came in. Come out right now. Come out of there. Keep going. Oh, good. Anybody else need a prayer? Be happy to pray for you.
All right. Praise God. But I just do this. Hmm. Oh, good. Angel encourages me to get prayer. For you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Stephen? Yeah. Okay, Julie. Nice yeah, to meet you. What can I pray for? Uh, let's say. Um, oh, sorry, here. Someone hurt you that you maybe were reminded of while you were sitting here today? I don't know, reminded. I'm constantly reminded. Okay. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, the church I was with, there was. Oh, okay. I didn't. Didn't appreciate how it ended. All right. Yeah. So, um, who who was the main person who hurt you there? Should I say the name? Yeah. Lynn. Glenn. Lynn. Lynn. Okay. Oh, why? And so, um, what they do to you? Well, just like very. In what? In what I could tell, and it just based on. What I see, it seemed like a very toxic environment. What did and, he do to you personally? Um, well, not long before, uh, before I was unwelcome, I was like, I was trying to confess things that I felt like I didn't do right. And I was just trying to explain the things that I saw in the church that I didn't, I didn't really agree with. And it was like, just these long messages with like so much um they didn't they weren't open to your correct you were sharing your thoughts they weren't open to that yeah and it just there was like a certain sort of heart behind it of of like not believing me like thinking like oh come on that's not like all of it that's not what you meant so i was like i i feel like maybe i was causing division by um I don't even know if I was, but I was just like, hey, maybe I shouldn't have said so much stuff to other people. But um, so I was sharing some of those things and they were, I think they were thinking like, that's not really a big deal. That's not what you meant. That's not what you meant. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it is. It is. So if I was wrong in thinking that that was division, but it was like, you know, very, so accusatory. It was like a very accusatory sort of feeling behind it. And I was, you're like not listening like you think you know what I meant more than I do and sounds like a little gaslighting yes. okay gaslighting is what it felt like. okay that's what it sounds like what you're describing gaslighting hypocrisy double standards like yeah yeah confusion a lot of confusion I don't because when things I, aren't straightforward it gets confusing I suppose I don't know that I'm totally confused, and I, I just think things were very wrong. I think I think I was correct in my um, my assessment. Fears. Okay. But it's just like there's other things that they do that were very good, mm -hmm. and so it was like, what's good, what's not good. I need to submit to authority and trust those that are elders and. I've been doing this a lot longer, but at the same time, it's like this, this doesn't seem right. So are you still going to church there, or did no, you leave? I'm not okay. welcome. Oh, okay. I see. It's in the park? Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. All right, Stephen. Well, let me pray yep. for you. Thank you, Lord, for bringing him here today, Lord God. Lord, it sounds like he saw some things and tried to be helpful, but it wasn't welcomed, Lord. Mm -hmm. And in the process, he got hurt. He felt offended. And so you you wanna you want to really think about that list, that Santa list, right? That you've done, and the things that Lynn did to you, mm -hmm. maybe some of the other people in the church, mm -hmm. and just make a conscious choice right now and say, I forgive him. I forgive Lynn. Forgive him. I bless him, Lord. I bless him. I pray that you bless his ministry. Oh. Pray you bless his ministry. Would you help him, Lord? Would you help him? I want to release the negative feelings I have. I want to release the negative feelings. The hurt I feel. The hurt I feel. Not being accepted. Not being accepted. Being rejected. Being rejected. 
Jesus. Help me, Lord. To release him right now. To release him right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Um, I'm going to turn this off because I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. I don't want to turn off, so I'm just unplugging it. I figure that'll work. It works over. Okay. Did you ever struggle with pornography? I have, but I'm. Okay. It's been years. Okay. How about masturbation? Um, same. Okay. Okay. Well, I think you still got some spirits in there from that. Okay. Okay. And so, do you ever have sexual dreams? Um. I mean, there's. I don't. Look, I'm not here to condemn you at all. Yeah, that's fine. I just. I'm trying to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Please. I've. I mean, there's. There's like white dreams occasionally. So. Okay, that's what I mean by that. Sexually charged dreams. Yeah, so, right. So I don't feel like they happen that often. Okay. Well, that it happens is just a little indicator of that, and so. When before, when you send in that way, you open a door to spirits mm -hmm. that come in. And they come in generally to bring comfort, mm. right? That's what less is all about. Whether it's food, sex, power, it's all lust. It's all combined. And so those spirits come in after you have felt significant rejection and fear. Okay. So, sometime in your life, probably when you were younger, some, something happened where you felt really rejected or you felt really afraid. Okay. Can you think of what that was? Early, young, I mean, I... How were your parents? Um, well, there was divorce when I was since... How old were you? Um, like maybe two or something. I don't have oh. any memories of my parents together. Okay. So, uh, I think uh, I did definitely harbor, I think, resentment towards my mom for doing that. But later I learned, it was like, yeah, I feel like that was the right move. But like resentment for even making um, the choices in the first place. Right. Like not, not being able to discern better, especially as a Christian. So there's, there's judgment there and stuff. Um, I've, I believe I've worked through it mostly. I mean, I'm sure there's still stuff, but... Yeah, generally, right? And so did you ever rebel as a teenager? Um, because you were kind of mad at her for making the choices she made? Some rebellion, but not in the typical sense, I guess, of like people going out and partying and whatever, not like that, doing drugs. But um, I... Um, I was interested in like goth stuff and uh, new age things, and I, so I kind of went down that road. Less for the supernatural. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it always fascinated me since I was young. Oh, I yeah. see. So it tells me that you have a sensitive spirit, and the spirits saw that when you were born, and they attacked you on that measure, and so they're like, "Oh, let's get them into the new age." Let's get them into supernatural type things, paranormal type things. Mm. Yeah. So Do you need prayer? that stuff is actually more dangerous than say pornography. Mm. Because it, someone brought up familiar spirits, you know about them? I've heard the term. Yeah, familiar spirits. So when you started doing some of the new age stuff and, and seeking after that, you were drawing in them. And so familiar spirits and religious spirits, are, they, they hang out together. Okay. Could have been one of the reasons why it drew you to that church, because they're very religious, controlling. Yeah, I feel like what I, what I felt like I saw a lack of in my other church and stuff is like the especially at bigger churches and a lot of churches it seems like people are unaware of things like like i a lot of people don't seem to be aware that like fornication is wrong mm -hmm. and, and it's like i feel like the church is seriously failing if 
people don't know that that's the biblical stance. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, and I felt like my mom didn't understand well enough to make better choices with who she married. Um, mm -hmm. Again, not like it was the worst terrible upbringing, but it was, yeah. it was just like for a Christian that has proper understanding of the Bible. You judged her for that. Yeah, I mean, I, I would make different decisions. Sure. It's easy, right? We, when we look at somebody, we're like, oh, that wasn't right. I'd make a better decision. No, and I, so, what, I would see these type of people. I would see their behavior. I would mm -hmm. see that they're not after God, that they have serious problems, and I wouldn't do it. Right. So okay. I think if she had better understanding. Mm -hmm. Probably. So I think that's part of why I was drawn to the church. It's like, you know, they actually sit down with people and they confront people and stuff. And it's like, I had an appreciation for that. Oh, okay. What was the role of the Holy Spirit? <laughs> uh, to convey. That's right. And so, you know, we could be a nitpicker yeah. and tell everybody, hey, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. And I kind of, I can kind of see that. I, I kind of do that a little bit because I'm in this ministry and I'm like, that person and that person and that person. And I came to the understanding um, some things need to be shared, but most things need not to be shared. I need to give God room yeah. to let Him work. Because if He moves on a person's heart, it's generally permanent. But if I move to say, hey, you're doing that wrong, then, then there's offense and resentment can build up. But if the Holy Spirit says, hey, I want you to work on that. Mm -hmm. And so it's very powerful, and that's the enemy, to be able to pick out all the things they're doing wrong and try to correct people. It's, it's actually condemning and not letting God do it. Trying to, take the, trying to like get in His way. Little, I'm going to help you, Lord, and let this person know, hey, they're fornicating and that's wrong. They already know it's wrong. I think a lot of times they don't. Well, they may say they don't know, but most people do know because they have a conscience. Her conscience will tell them, I probably shouldn't be doing this. But then they ignore their conscience. Um, I mean, but like I think of the verse where Paul says, I wouldn't have known that coveting is wrong except for the, that the law that told him. Sure. And then you've got all the prophets that tell people hey, you need to repent of your sins and stuff. And so I think it does need to be taught what sin and what Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, of course, it, it needs to be taught. And that's, um, you know, when you have, say, a Bible study or a church or something, or you have a good friend and you're like, hey, good friend, I really care about you, but you're sleeping with your boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And I know it's going to hurt you because it really hurts God. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, do you want to talk about that? Coming at them from a place of love. Yeah. Right? And because if we're not led by the Holy Spirit, I think you know, it gets kind of messed up. So it sounds like this guy, Lynn, you're trying to tell him some stuff, and he's not receiving it from you, or he's twisting it, or, or whatever happened. I don't know. So, well, let me just pray for you. Stephen, right? Yeah. Okay. Father God, I thank you for Stephen here, Lord. Thanks for bringing him today, Lord. I don't think he's ever been here before. I don't know. But, Lord, he um, was a part of a fellowship. And I imagine he had some friends there. And he really enjoyed um, a lot of things about the church, Lord. And now the... The leadership has asked him to leave, and that has hurt his heart, Lord. So, Father, he, he just verbally said that he forgives this man that he feels the most offense towards. And I pray, Lord, that you would send the Holy Spirit to Lynn and let him know that Stephen does forgive him. Send the Holy Spirit right now to him. Let him know, Lord. But today, Stephen has made a choice. He's like, I'm forgiving this man who hurt my feelings. 
who offended me, who wouldn't listen to me, who wouldn't accept, and who ultimately rejected me. I forgive him, Lord. I forgive him, Lord. I want to let him go out of my soul, out of my mind. I don't want to think about it anymore. I don't want to talk about it anymore, God. So, Father, I pray that you help him, Lord, to catch thoughts, to catch any negative thoughts, Lord, about the situation, about the people who who didn't didn't accept what he was saying. He he saw some things that he thought weren't right, weren't biblically right, weren't in love, and and it got twisted. And so, Lord, that hurt him. And I pray right now, God, that you would touch his soul. Lord, I, I pray, God, that you would reveal your love to him, God, and how you deal with us, Lord. And Lord, I know he said he repented already of that, that lust from the past, pornography, fornication. Any open doors that came in, Lust for power. He repents of it right now. He's sorry for trying to be the Holy Spirit. He's sorry for trying to get in your way and not let you move in your timing. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you know all the different things, Lord. The hurt that he experienced from his mom marrying someone that wasn't, maybe she wasn't equally yoked with, and how that hurt him as a young man. He's sorry for judging her. He's sorry for sowing a seed of judgment, Lord, that ultimately will come back upon him. What a man sows, therefore he will reap. And so he's sorry for judging his mother in the name of Jesus. Just tell the Lord, I'm so sorry, Lord. I don't want that that seed of judgment to root back up in my life. I don't want the seed of judgment to root back in. To spring up in my life. Spring up in my life. I repent of it right now, Lord. I repent of it right now. The ways I've judged people, Lord, I don't want that judgment to come back upon me. The ways I've judged people. I ask for mercy, Lord. Not judgment. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. All right, you come up and out right now, in the, right now. Right now. in the name of Jesus Christ, your spirit of judgment that's got him looking and seeing everything that's wrong. You come out of there right now. He's not the police. He's not the Holy Ghost police. That's not his job. He quits today. Come out right now. Come out of there. He's not going to sow judgment upon himself. He's asking for mercy. He asked for mercy. We asked for mercy for Lynn. We asked for mercy for that church that rejected him. We asked for mercy for his mother. I asked for mercy for Stephen, Lord. I command these spirits that, that draw his eyes to the things that people are doing wrong. I command you to leave them right now in the name of Jesus. Those eyes, that those spirit that draws his eyes and his mind to find out what's wrong according to the law. Lord, we come under your grace and we accept your mercy, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I come against the spirit of lust right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to loose him. I command you to loose him right now. Lust for power. Lust for spiritual power. Come out right now. Lust for knowledge. Come up and out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Go. Come out right now. Go in Jesus' name. You monster, you go right now. You come out of them right now. You spirit of lust, you come out right now. Fornication, adultery, coming down through the mother's bloodline. I command you to go from his father's bloodline. I command you to go right now. Just take a couple of deep breaths. Come out right now. Go up and out. Spirit of lust, you come out of there. Go in Jesus' name. Loose him. You come out of his dreams. I break the covenant in the spirit world of marriage. Marrying him to a spirit, a spirit spouse, a water spirit. I break it right now in the mighty name of Jesus causing these dreams. I command you to go. Go in Jesus' name. 
Loose them right now. Loose them right now. Go in Jesus' name. Go right now. Go right now. Come out. Come out right now. Spirit spouse, come out of there. Come out right now. You're not going to cause every relationship to bust up in his life. You're going to stop breaking relationships. You're not going to keep him from getting married one day and having a family. I command you to loose him right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Go. Go right now. You feel anything moving around in you? No. No? Okay. Look, I want you to really... Look, the Lord has definitely revealed to me that there's something in there attached to lust. Okay. And so I want you to get honest with God about that. Okay. Okay? I, I do believe there's still attachment towards um, next girlfriend. Okay. Like, I've only had one. Okay. Okay. You slept with her? Not exactly. Fooled around. Okay. Something more like that. Is she older than you? No. Okay. How old were you? About 18. Okay. And how old was she? 16. Okay. At that time. All right. Um, what's her name? Jackie. Jackie. Okay. How, why'd you break up? Uh, she was She was definitely not the right sort of person I should have been with. Why not? No. Uh, she's very toxic and prickly. Negative? Manipulative? I... Complaining? Yeah. <laughs> Some like just yeah, the sort of thing she would say. It's just like very, very bad uh, mentality, like worse than I, anyone else I've known, perhaps. Okay. Okay. Um, well, something drew you to her. I was desperate, desperate for someone to want me, and I was hurting a lot, and so. The timing. I was like, she's like, I, she wanted me, and so I was like, okay, maybe I can. In in a twisted way, and I was like, maybe I can. Be, be a comfort to her and get comfort myself. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, well, let's try to let's try to break the soul tie or anything that's still attached to you from her. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Just just repent of being with her. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry, God. God, I'm sorry for being in that relationship and being physical and uh, emotionally involved. I respect Jackie. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Lord. I bless her. Yes, thank you, Jesus. I bless Jackie, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Jackie, And I forgive her for being toxic. For being toxic. And I forgive myself for being in that relationship. Lord, I'm sorry that I didn't go to you when I felt desperate. I'm sorry that I didn't go to you. So sorry, Lord. So sorry. And I sought comfort outside of you, Holy Spirit. I sought comfort outside of you. I repent of that right now. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you. All right. All right. Any spirits from Jackie that came in there, I command you to come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirits from Jackie that got in, that got attached, whatever, we command you to go right now. Command you to go right now. Jackie, come out of there. Come out, compromise. Come out right now. Come out right now. Compromise. Come out in Jesus' name. Shame. Come out of there. Come out right now. Embarrassment. Come out in Jesus' name. Loose them right now. Loose them right now. Loose them right now. Go. Negative thoughts towards himself. You come out right now. You're making mistakes. Come out. Come out of there right now in the name of Jesus. Go. Jackie. Get out of there. Come out. Seduction. Come out of there. Come out right now. Spirits of lust that came in through Jackie. You come out right now. Come out right now. Go in Jesus' name. Go right now. Jackie, get out of that body. Get out of his mind. 
Get off of his body. Command you to go right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, you got the miracle list by chance? Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. Do it, okay? Okay, I've, I've done it, but... Oh, how long have you had it? Um, maybe half the year, at least. Oh, okay, that's cool. All right. Well... I don't know that I've, like, totally done it. Watch some of those videos. I've watched videos, too. Have you? Yeah. Oh, good. Which one did you choose? I've watched a number of them. Oh, from the miracle list? And the miracle list? I'm not sure, particularly that one. Okay, yeah, check on the miracle list. There's about five different videos that are mentioned. And just pick one that you feel the most connected to. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, do you mean on the miracle list uh -huh. or about it? Okay, no, on the miracle, on the miracle list, list. I think I've watched. Which one did you get? Which one did you choose? The miracle list, I have the normal one. So on the miracle list, it's like number 10 or 8 or something. Watch the videos. Anxiety, overcoming rejection. Yeah. I think that would be a good one for you. Yeah. I think with. I've watched all of them. Okay. Okay. But, uh, you know, it can always be helpful to go through it again. So, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Okay. I don't know if this is helpful at all, but yeah, so I'm close to Angel and also Grace. Okay, okay. Because they're both from the previous sure. church. Sure, yeah. I speak to Grace quite a bit. Oh, okay. And uh, I've given her my best shot at <laughs> trying to help her and stuff. Um, I, I still do, but like, we have quite a close connection, so. Okay. Um, She's very sick. It's going to be a while. Mm -hmm. It's all right. We work with people like that all the time. Yeah, I don't understand that because I, I feel like she's very sincere about She's passive. passive. Okay. Yeah, she knows it. She knows it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's passive. She's got to get freaking angry. Okay. Right. Passivity will make you lunch for the devil. You can't be passive. You have to fight for your life. She's not fighting for her life. Hmm. I'm not telling you anything I haven't already told her. Okay? You can't be passive against the devil. He's, he's in there. I'm telling you. Spirit of lust in there. I don't know what it is, but it's in there. I know that. Okay? It could be for power, it could be for knowledge, it could be for supernatural things, it could be the lust to be right all the time. I don't know what it is. It could be sexual. I don't know. Get before the Lord. Get on your knees and humble yourself before Him and ask Him, say, Lord, what is it? Because you love the Lord. You don't want anything in your way. Okay? All right. God bless you. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for coming. God bless you. God bless you.